So I knew I wanted to be a writer since I was seven, but I didn't grow up in a family where there were writers. So it was kind of like saying, I want to grow up and be homeless. Because my family was like, you're never going to make any money. Are you crazy? Like, this isn't what we do. You need to get a job. Like, and OK, that's a nice hobby. But what are you going to do to make some money and eventually get out of our house? And so I, um, I wouldn't tell the truth, I would say. Uh, you know, I'm going to be a teacher, I'm going to be a lawyer, I'm going to be a hairdresser, whatever, you know. But, but I knew I was going to be a writer. And I um, just wrote all the time. And, uh, and you know, I had, and I had teachers who encouraged it. I had teachers who saw that, you know, um, that brilliance is passion recognized. If someone has something they're really passionate at, that's their brilliance. And how do we how do we grow that or help them to grow that? And so I wrote all the time. I copied writers. If I, found, I remember finding a collection of poems, American Negro Poetry Anthology, that was edited by Arna Bontemps. And I read it through. I memorized all these poems. I started trying to write like Claude McKay and Audre Lorde and stuff, and Langston Hughes, of course. But, um, but I, I just knew that. I wanted to be a writer when my family realized I was serious. Um, when I would walk into the room, they would get quiet because they're like, OK, she's going to write all about us if she's writing. And I'm like, you guys are not that interesting. But, but you know, I couldn't say that I would get in trouble. But, um, but I just, I, I, I wanted to write about my community. Like I wanted to write, I wanted to put the world I knew on the page. And so I had never read books about Brooklyn. I had never read books about people going from Brooklyn to South Carolina and back again until I read Zealy by Virginia Hamilton. And that was one of the first books that I thought, wow, not only is this person writing about stuff that I know, but it's a black woman writing about it. And so black women do write books. And, and it was, it was, you know, it was a moment that turned me around, um, just like the moment with John Steptoe and reading Stevie. Um, and then I started discovering other writers like James Baldwin and Alice Walker and um, Mildred Taylor. And, and they, just reading all these stories that were so populated with people who were familiar to me really just made the fire to write burn even hotter. And, um, and so I wrote all the time in the first book was the first novel was Last Summer with Mason, which is about two girls growing up in Brooklyn, and one gets accepted to a predominantly white boarding school, and what that means to leave your community and have to come back to your community, and what does it mean for the people who you've left. And so, um, and then as I got braver as a writer, I started moving out of my community and feel in the first book. Um, from the Notebooks of Melon and Son was the first time I wrote from the point of view of a guy. I had written all these books from the point of view of girls, and I said, you know, I know I can do that. Let me try this other thing. And it took forever. It took about two and a half years, and I just struggled, and I couldn't get his voice on the page, and I asked my brothers, and they didn't remember what it was like to be that age, and I would watch guys in the playground, and that wasn't what I was going for. And then I just kind of did this thing where I said, okay, if I had a son, what would he be like? <laughs> what would I want him to be like? If I had a best friend that was a boy, what would he be like? If three boys were in a room, what would they talk about? And just ask myself all these questions and finally started forming this kid. Um, and the more I wrote him, the more I liked him, and the more I tried to make him real.